Hey, thank you for checking out this video on the Microsoft Reactor YouTube channel. My name is Gwen. I'm a cloud developer advocate here at Microsoft. And the following is taken from a live stream that I did with Kevin Oliver, a machine learning engineer at the Octavian Group. Kevin has extensive experience with Bicep, which is an infrastructure as code tool for Microsoft Azure. And we're about to dive into a conversation on Bicep, tooling, parameter files, loops, and a bunch more tips and tricks that he's picked up along his way working with Bicep. The link to the entire live stream will be in the description, so be sure to check that out. Let's dive right in. So with that, we're gonna look at some of the parameters that we're passing into the file since we've talked about parameters a little bit. Let me know, Gwen, if that... That looks good. Should, that looks good, okay. Mm -hmm. So all of our parameters will match up with a parameter that's being passed into our... Um, passed in from our parameter files. There's a couple of different ways to get your parameters into your deployment. Um, I like to use parameter files because it allows me to define parameters based on environments or applications. Uh, there's other ways. Um, another way that's one of the uh, best practice Microsoft goes for is config maps, where you put all of your values into your bicep template and then you don't have any additional files. You know, a lot of people like to go that route. For me, having the template or the parameter file separate really allows me to modularize the code and make it reusable across multiple projects without having to worry about going in and changing. Well, this project only has a dev and production environment. Well, this one has a dev and a stage and a QA. And now we're still going to end up with a little bit of um, difference between some of our modules where we could uh, control all that via the parameter file. You, you said config maps? Config maps, yeah. So Essentially what that is, is taking, instead of having parameters here, mm -hmm. we would um, set all of these values in a uh, block of code. So we would have a object that would contain, say, a dev and prod stage, and then all the values for those um, for that environment would be part of that config map. And then so when you went to go deploy to dev, um, you would just uh, map out some of that. And I'll show a little example of what a mm -hmm. config map looks like um, as we update some of our code here. Okay. But So looking at our parameter file, for those who haven't seen it before, there's a lot of basic values. Um, we're passing in strings, we're passing in some arrays, um, but again, we're still not passing a lot of, um, we're not passing any real complex objects or we're not ha having a lot of flexibility that allows us to deploy multiple resources or in this case, subnets what we're gonna aim to do uh, easily. So what I'm gonna do is make a little update to our parameter file here to get in something that's a little bit more flexible that we can use going forward. And then we're gonna talk about this in a second. I'm gonna make this the full screen so we can see what's here. So now we have a, a number of new properties and we're gonna just focus on the subnets to start. So instead of having each subnet property as its own value, uh, subnet name, a subnet IP address, and range, we're going to go ahead and create an object to hold all of these things. And this is just an array of subnets that has every property that each subnet's going to need to be deployed. So we have our the name for our subnet, we have our subnet prefix, uh, delegations that are going to be applied, um, any of the properties that you would use to deploy on a subnet, you can set here. And with this format, it really it allows me to really easily add a third subnet if I wanted to. So I need to come in here and add a database subnet. I can go ahead and just copy and paste that code in. And as part of the module that we're gonna update, we'll be able to go through and it will use loops to deploy all of these out without having to do, write any additional code into our template. So we're gonna pull that out here. And we're going to save our template. Um, as I was mentioning before about that config maps, so we have a locations list. Previously, we were just passing in our location, which was in this case, North Central US that we were gonna deploy our resources to. Here, we're gonna have a mapping of North Central US to a short name for NCN US. So we're not taking up so many characters as part of our deployment name. Um, one of the, uh, bicep best practices that Microsoft likes to show is, is doing a config map similar to this with all the parameters that you would use inside of your bicep template so that you can um, avoid having to have external files like a parameter file to do your deployments with. We're also gonna be pushing some DNS servers up to 
uh, as part of our deployment, just to show a variety of different fields that you can pass as part of, part of your properties. So by by using arrays with your parameters, mm -hmm. it's it's cleaner, obviously, but that means within your bicep file, you, like you mentioned, you'll just have to iterate over them? Correct, yeah. So we're going to add in a little looping to help us go through these okay. and verify um, what gets deployed where and when. So we're going to jump back into our, well, actually, we're going to jump into our main file first and do a little updating of it so that we can get ready to accept these new parameters that we just added. Let's do these sections. So this is going to look a lot different than what we just had previously. And what I've done is pasted in a more best practice version of what your parameters can look like uh, when you're finishing up a, a bicep template. Whenever you're passing in parameters, you definitely should try and add some type of a description to it. Let everyone who's going to be using this file after you know what these are for. Um, we've also updated some of the names and the formats of the names to provide a nice consistent naming experience for all of our parameters. And we're going to do the same thing with our variables and, and um, resource groups as well. Uh, choosing a naming standard will really help you in the long run be able to make sure that whether it's just you or you and your organization who are writing templates uh, has a nice consistent feel anytime you open up a template either written by yourself or another teammate. Um, not choosing a standard and just letting anyone do what they want as far as naming goes can really make it difficult and a much more complex template to understand what this value is or what this parameter is for without having to uh, dig into the file and really jump around a bit to understand what's going on with it. And with that, we're going to do a little bit more updating here. Right, and now we're going to do a little update with our variables as well. And you can see I've, I've broken up my variables a little bit as far as what I'm going to use for creating environment names and um, group names. I like to control my naming standard through uh, the variables here. Uh, that way, if whenever I'm updating uh, names for a resource or something in a module, all I have to do is go and update the variable, and all those locations where it's used will be updated. And then here you can see where we're taking advantage of that um, config mapping. So I'm passing in my location list. That's here in our file. And from there, we're going to take whatever our location is and take the value from it. So if we're passing in North Central US, we're going to get a value of NCN, uh, NCN US. So we're getting a nice short name. And that really allows you to very easily update in the parameter file as well more locations that you're deploying to without having to come out and touch the bicep file. Again, really making sure that we only update the bicep file when we're adding new functionality, not just changing a location name or adding a new location to deployment. That should be part of your parameters. We're also going to include some tags because all of your resources should be tagged with at least by where it's, where it's being created, or if nothing else, let's choose the current date and deploy it out that way. Um, so you know the last time that it was deployed. For me, we're going to be doing a what we are creating it by, we're using the CLI today. We're going to be uh, choosing what the environment we're deploying to, our current date of deployment, and the product. There's uh, multiple other different kinds of tags you can use. You can put a owner for the resource, uh, but everything should get tagged in some way. Does does Bicep enforce you to have tags, or is that just a best practice you've picked up along the way? It does not force you to use tags, but I, for me, it's a best practice. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. want to deploy something that doesn't have a tag. It also helps you to understand as well if um, this created by one, as I like to use, uh, especially during like DevOps pipelines. If inside of a subscription, everything's supposed to be being deployed via a pipeline, then if I see something that doesn't have tags assigned or something that doesn't have a has a created by with no value in it, then mm -hmm. I know it might be something that someone deployed by hand and didn't deploy from a pipeline. Uh, it's also a great way to understand which pipeline deployed this resource. If I've got 15 resources being deployed across five different pipelines, um, it may be difficult to know exactly where it came from without doing a little digging. Got it, got it. Just debugging purposes, the more the... Yeah, okay. exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, we're going to update some of our 
additional resources here just to keep our naming standard going. So uh, I keep my variable names, resource names, uh, all the names as verbose as possible because I'm not 100% sure who the next person is going to be using this file is. It might be me, it might be a customer, um, it might be a coworker. So the more description I can put in the file so that they can understand what is being used for, I think is better. Um, that might be verbo too verbose for some people, but uh, it, it does work for me.